is popping people and welcome back to another tattoo tips video so today's video is going to be on irritation in black and gray tattoos now what is irritation what's classed as irritation irritation would be the redness that we get the little red dots like any swelling stuff like that but generally the like tomato red irritation that you get when doing a tattoo like you will touch that that customer once and it is just manic it is mayhem like you will just get this tomato red skin and you just cannot see anything at all with your tones with your black and gray and it is a absolute nightmare which is why I do believe that black and gray is a lot harder than color because color guys do not have to deal with this as much. You, you just cannot see your tones. You will put your light tone in and it will immediately go dark. And unless you are comfortable with those tones and you know how those tones set and how those tones heal, it is gonna throw you off your game massively. And if you've never experienced it before, and then when you finally do experience it, it makes for a pretty, pretty hard day's work. Okay, do so how can we deal with this irritation? First off, number one would definitely be check that consent form before you tattoo that person. Make sure that they have no allergies to latex or any other allergies that they may have. Make sure they are all fit and well. That would be my numero uno tip all right check that consent form make sure everything is cushy mate tip number two guys for dealing with irritation in black and gray would be to check your needles it sounds such an obvious one so always check your needles okay you are checking for any barbs you are checking if the needles put together correctly basically if there is any malfunction at all with that needle you need to be aware of. You could have a barbed needle and you are putting that on skin and it is just gonna chew up, it is just gonna tear that skin to pieces, mate. It is just not good. Especially, guys, it happens all too much when we are getting low on pigment in those ink cups and we put it down at the bottom and then, boom, you know, we hit that bottom of the ink cup. Okay, it is quite easy just to carry on be aware of that also if you are if you are hitting that needle on that bottom of that ink cap then yeah it, it can lead to some pretty uh, pretty nasty shit my next tip guys would be to use process butters now personally i'm not big on process butters but they do have a place in this industry and in the tattoo process now i'm not going to name any names of any process butters unless you want to you know, chuck a little backhander to the channel. There may be. We may name some process butters, some good ones. But guys, a process butter does help reduce redness. It is not the be end all of tattooing and the be end all of irritation. However, they they are pretty good. It's not immediate. You, you're not gonna put the process butter on straight away and then poof. Like magic, the redness is just gone. It doesn't work like that. You will put the process butter on and then you will maybe let it settle for like five minutes and then it'll reduce redness a lot quicker than what that redness would reduce otherwise. So process butters, get yourself a good process butter. You don't have to use the process butter all the time. Uh, normal Vaseline will always, always be the best, but you can have it on hand for a situation where you might need it. So guys, my next tip would be to tattoo an area, getting in your basic tones and your basic shapes before that redness starts, and then moving on to the next area, doing the same again, and then finally, after applying some process butter or leaving that area to calm down, going back to it and finishing it off. 
It's important to realize though guys that when you are doing this sort of thing not to leave that previous area too long. The last thing you want to be doing is moving on, leaving that area for two to three hours and then coming back to it because mate that is just pure evil and your customer is not going to like it. So do not do that. Literally move on, get the next shape in, as soon as that redness is gone or as soon as it's subsided a lot more for you to feel comfortable to carry on, then obviously carry on and do it. But mapping in that area just with that basic tone is a great thing to do. And if anything, because you're getting those basic tones in, it kind of limits the amount of time that you have to deal with irritation because before that irritation comes, you've already moved on to the next area and then when you go back, the irritation is not there anymore. Don't get me wrong, obviously when you start going back on that area, it is just gonna get irritated again. However, you should have done enough to be able to pick it up and get that area finished a lot easier. And on to tip number whatever, I can't remember, but the next one would be to use distilled water and only use distilled water. Contrary to popular belief guys, witch hazel does cause reactions. So if you are using witch hazel in any of your pigments or any of your washers or anything like that, guys, witch hazel can cause an adverse reaction to what you think it does. So just stick to distilled water when it comes to your wash down solutions, your green soaps and any like gray washers that you are making yourself. I personally think witch hazel is a absolute no-no. I've I've used it like once or twice in my in my career and I didn't like it. I, a lot of people used to use witch hazel to get rid of redness, but a lot of people don't actually know that they are allergic to witch hazel or that they're gonna have an adverse reaction to witch hazel because let's be honest, who uses witch hazel in their everyday life? Not a lot of people. They don't know to be able to tell you, so yeah. I, I personally don't like witch hazel, and I do not recommend using witch hazel during the tattoo process. So next, guys, is take note of the area that you are tattooing. If somebody's getting tattooed on the neck or behind the knee, those like areas are a lot more sensitive to, say, a forearm. So you're going to get a different reaction to a forearm when you are tattooing on a neck or behind the knee or any other sensitive area like an armpit or something like that, it's going to be different. It's different on every single person, on every single place of the tattoo, on the body. It's, it's completely different all the time. But there is a general like consensus that these places are gonna be a lot more sensitive. Sometimes guys, you're just gonna have to deal with it depending on where you're tattooing. But what you also need to take into mind guys is whether you are tattooing a male or female. Females generally have more sensitive skin than a male does. For example, obviously if you're tattooing a male hand and he's a laborer, for example, like he's a bricklayer or he's a plumber and he uses his hands a lot, Guys, those hands are gonna be a lot rougher than what that females are. Taking that into account also for you to assess the situation on how the tattoos react it, but adjust accordingly to these things. But guys, after all this is said, those are just some tips to help you along the way. Sometimes guys, you can tattoo somebody and no matter what you do, you could like put everything that you know into getting that irritation down and it does not matter. It's just how that person reacts to being tattooed. There's nothing that you can do about it. I've literally tattooed somebody once. I've literally put the needle on, done a few, done one pass, and then boom, like it's just tomato red. It is, it is just horrible. Like there's just some people that, that just react like that and there is nothing you can do about it. And as harsh as it sounds, guys, you just have to suck it up. But the more you deal with that type of skin, the more you get used to it, and then it just becomes another normal process. But at the beginning, when you deal with it first time, it can throw you for a massive loop. Sometimes with black and gray guys, it happens. You can't see your blends. It's just super red. Hopefully guys, these tips will go to helping you deal with this because I know for me when it first happened to me it, it it just absolutely threw me 
off my game. I didn't know what was happening. I was trying to do everything. I was speeding my machine up. I was slowing my machine down. I was trying different needles. I was tattooing lighter. I was, I was doing all these things and it just wasn't going away. And the first time you encounter it, it's scary, man. Like you get, you get some sweat on that top lip because suddenly it feels like you're tattooing blind. But guys, I hope this video helps you out. As always, go over, check out my tattoo tips playlist. Don't forget to like this video. The likes really do help on these videos. Don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to turn on bell notifications to get notified every time this sexy bitch uploads a new video. But guys, as always, I shall see you all in the next one. Adios.